SpaceX just shocked everyone with a proposal that contradicts everything Elon Musk has preached for years, abandoning reusability. With China racing to plant their flag on the moon by 2030, and the U.S. now committed to getting there first in 2028, SpaceX shared plans for a drastically simplified Starship. No heat shield tiles, no recovery flaps, no complex systems, just a one-way rocket designed to win the new space race at any cost. But here's what nobody saw coming. Could throwing away Starship actually be the fastest path to beating China? To understand why SpaceX is considering this radical shift, we need to talk about what just happened in Washington. On December 17th, the U.S. Senate confirmed Jared Isaacman as NASA's new administrator with a decisive 67 to 30 vote. This wasn't just another political appointment. Isaac Mann is a billionaire who's actually flown to space twice, commanded the first all-civilian orbital mission, and performed the first private spacewalk. He's also the founder of Shift 4 and bankrolls the entire Polaris program with SpaceX. So when critics raise concerns about his close ties to Elon Musk, they weren't wrong. But here's the reality. NASA had been operating under temporary leadership for over a year, and the space agency desperately needed someone who actually understands what it takes to get hardware off the ground. Within hours of being sworn in, President Trump signed an executive order that essentially rewrote America's space strategy. The document is ambitious, almost aggressive in tone. It commits the United States to returning Americans to the moon by 2028, establishing permanent lunar infrastructure by 2030, and developing technologies for the next century of space exploration. But the most revealing part? The order explicitly states that America will never come in second place in space. That's not diplomatic language. That's a direct shot at China which has publicly declared plans to land Taikonauts on the moon by 2030. What we're witnessing is the new space race, and unlike the Cold War version, this one has a clear deadline and a very specific opponent. Now here's where the timeline gets uncomfortable for SpaceX. The Artemis program originally targeted 2024 for the first crewed lunar landing under Trump's first administration. Everyone knew that was fantasy. The Biden administration pushed it to 2027, which still seemed optimistic. Now we're back to 2028, and suddenly that date has real weight behind it because of what's happening on the other side of the Pacific. China isn't bluffing about 2030. They've already landed multiple rovers on the lunar surface, including one on the far side, something no other nation has accomplished. They're building their own space station, developing heavy lift rockets, and training their astronaut corps specifically for lunar missions. The geopolitical stakes are enormous. Whoever establishes the first permanent presence on the moon gains strategic advantages in resources, technology demonstration, and frankly, bragging rights that will echo for generations. So can SpaceX actually pull off a crewed lunar landing by September 2028? According to their internal roadmap, yes, but barely. The company plans to attempt in-space propellant transfer between two starships in June 2026. If that succeeds, an uncrewed lunar landing follows in June 2027. Then, if everything goes perfectly, astronauts touch down 15 months later. But notice what's missing from that timeline. Margin for error. One failed test, one unexpected anomaly, and the whole schedule collapses. And that's exactly why SpaceX is now talking about going expendable. Let's be clear about what expendable means. The current Starship design is a masterpiece of engineering complexity. It has six massive flaps for atmospheric control, over 18,000 heat shield tiles that must survive re-entry temperatures exceeding 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit, header tanks to feed engines during landing, and an intricate guidance system to execute a controlled vertical touchdown. Building and testing all of that takes time, lots of time. An expendable version strips away everything non-essential. No flaps, no heat shield, simplified avionics, reduced structural reinforcement. You're left with what's essentially a powerful upper stage that does one job, deliver payload to its destination, then burn up on re-entry or crash into the ocean. Does that sound like a step backward? Absolutely. Is it faster to develop and fly? Also absolutely. And in a race against China, 
speed might matter more than elegance. Here's the part Elon Musk probably hates to admit. SpaceX may have overcommitted to reusability from day one. Reusability is the holy grail of spaceflight economics, and Musk has built his entire vision around it. But making Starship fully reusable required solving problems that had never been solved before, at a scale no one had attempted. The result has been flight after flight focused on landing attempts, heat shield performance, and flap control, while payload delivery to orbit kept getting delayed. If SpaceX had started with a simple expendable upper stage back in 2020, they might already have dozens of successful orbital missions under their belt. They could have refined operations, validated orbital refueling, and proven out the Super Heavy Booster, which is actually easier to recover and houses the most expensive Raptor engines anyway. Then once the operational tempo was established, they could have introduced reusability piece by piece. Instead, they are trying to perfect everything simultaneously, and the clock is ticking. The orbital refueling challenge makes this even more complicated. Starship needs to refuel in orbit to reach the moon, because it can only make it to low Earth orbit with enough propellant remaining for a controlled return and landing. To go further, it has to top off its tanks in space using multiple tanker starships. But here's the catch. No one has ever transferred cryogenic propellant in microgravity. Liquid methane and liquid oxygen are stored at temperatures around minus 160 and minus 183 degrees Celsius, respectively. They boil off constantly, even in insulated tanks. In microgravity, fluids don't settle at the bottom of tanks like they do on Earth. They float around in unpredictable ways. Managing pressure, flow rates, venting, and thermal control during a transfer between two spacecraft moving at 17,000 miles per hour is an engineering nightmare. SpaceX doesn't even know yet how many tanker flights one lunar mission will require. Estimates range from 8 to 16 launches. That's why the June 2026 refueling demo is so critical. It's not just about proving the concept. It's about getting real data on efficiency, boil-off rates, and transfer times so they can actually plan missions with confidence. Going expendable potentially simplifies this entire equation. An expendable Starship could carry up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit according to SpaceX's own projections, compared to roughly 100 to 150 tons for a reusable version. That extra capacity means fewer refueling flights, less complexity, and faster mission turnaround. For the early Artemis missions, SpaceX could fly expendable tankers, skip the landing attempts entirely, and just focus on getting propellant where it needs to go. It's not elegant, and it definitely doesn't fit Musk's long-term vision, but with a 2028 deadline, practicality might trump ideology. Meanwhile, Blue Origin is playing a completely different game. Their Blue Moon lander is smaller than Starship, but still requires in-space refueling under the original design. However, CEO Dave Limp recently hinted that Blue Origin has a proposal for NASA that could accelerate the timeline. He wouldn't share details, but sources suggest their updated Artemis. Three concepts skips orbital refueling entirely. How? Probably by using their new Glenn rocket, which is significantly more powerful than previously planned, combined with a lighter lander configuration. Blue Origin's Blue Moon Mark I test vehicle is launching next year and stands about 8 meters tall with a fully fueled mass of 21 metric tons. It can deliver three metric tons of payload to the lunar surface, enough for rovers or small infrastructure. Could it be modified for humans? Possibly, though it would need extensive life support upgrades. What's intriguing is Blue Origin's suggestion they could be ready by 2028 without relying on unproven refueling technology. If that's true, NASA suddenly has options. Competition is about to get very interesting. And then there's the nuclear reactor wildcard. The executive order doesn't just talk about getting to the moon. It emphasizes developing technologies for the next century of space achievement, and nuclear power sits at the center of that vision. NASA announced plans to place a fission reactor on the moon by 2030, and this executive order doubles down on that commitment. Why nuclear? Because solar panels are useless during the two-week lunar night, and any permanent base needs continuous power for life support, communications, and operations. 
A small nuclear reactor could provide hundreds of kilowatts for years, enabling everything from mining operations to scientific research. The Outer Space Treaty prohibits nuclear weapons in space but explicitly allows reactors. The U.S. even flew one back in 1965 called SNAP-10A. The Soviets used them extensively on reconnaissance satellites until Cosmos 954 crashed over Canada in 1978 spreading radioactive debris across hundreds of miles and effectively ending their program. The technology is proven, but the political and safety challenges remain significant. Still, if America wants a permanent lunar presence before China, nuclear power isn't optional, it's essential. What we're watching unfold is a fundamental recalculation of priorities. SpaceX built its reputation on reusability and long-term sustainability. But when national prestige and geopolitical competition enter the equation, those principles become negotiable. The question isn't whether expendable starships are the future. They're clearly not. The question is whether they're the fastest path to winning this specific race at this specific moment in history. So here's what this all comes down to. We're watching Elon Musk face a choice he never wanted to make. Build the perfect reusable spaceship and risk losing the race or compromise his vision and win. The irony is almost painful. For years, Musk has preached that reusability is the only path forward, that throwing away rockets is wasteful and backwards. Now to beat China to the moon, he might have to do exactly that. And you know what? He's probably right to consider it. Because while reusability matters for the long game, geopolitics operates on a different timeline. The nation that plants its flag first establishes the first permanent base, and controls lunar resources will shape space policy for the next century. Second place in this race doesn't get a participation trophy, it gets left behind. The Trump administration clearly understands this. The executive order isn't subtle, it's a declaration that America will dominate space, period. Jared Isaacman's confirmation, the 2028 deadline, the nuclear reactor commitment, these aren't just policy goals. They're battle plans for a competition that China takes very seriously. And if SpaceX has to sacrifice some of its principles to win, that might be the smartest strategic decision they ever make. The real genius isn't building the most elegant solution. It's knowing when to build the fastest one. What do you think? Is going expendable a betrayal of SpaceX's mission? Or is it the only realistic way to beat China? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and share this video. And subscribe to New Space Review to stay ahead of every major development in the new space race. This story is just getting started.